Microsoft has a habit of getting a majority of computer users familiar with an operating system and then right when we understand it, they go and change everything. But is the new Windows 8 operating system a passing fad that won't catch on or a standard that we would be foolish not to adopt? Well, let's take a look at the new changes and features in it and then decide for ourselves. What Microsoft is trying to do with Windows 8 is give you a common user interface across all of your devices. So whether you have a tablet, a PC, or a phone, your experience will be the same across all of them. Now what this means is that you shouldn't expect a typical desktop operating system like with previous versions of Windows, nor should you expect a mobile operating system like with iOS or Android, but what you should expect is a hybrid of both. So keep that in mind as we look at these new features. The first thing that you're gonna run into with the new Windows 8 is the lock screen. Like the type of lock screen you'd have on an iPhone or Android device. Just swipe up from the bottom of the screen to log in. Now, since Windows 8 is made for both touch and keyboard or mouse inputs, I'll show you how to do both. You'll see the keyboard shortcuts here. After creating and signing in with a Microsoft account, you'll see the start screen, one of Windows 8's boldest features. Swiping left to right will show you all of your apps that are installed, similar to the app screen of iOS and Android. Also like other mobile devices, Microsoft has an app store where you can download and install new apps. These app icons are called tiles, and you can drag and drop them to rearrange them. Clicking on the minus sign in the lower right hand corner of the screen will zoom the apps out so that you can then organize them by groups as well. Long pressing on a tile will bring up sizing and removal options and with some of them as you can see you can make them live so that they show you updates within the tile itself. Selecting all apps will then bring up all of your applications so that you can manage both your apps and desktop programs. And yes, it's important to note that apps and desktop programs are completely different creatures. From here, you can hit the Windows 8 button on your keyboard or device to return to the start screen. One last thing to point out on the start screen before we move on is your profile name in the upper right. Here you can change your profile picture as well as lock or sign out of the computer. You'll notice that one of the tiles is for the desktop, and this is where Windows 8 gets tricky. So what I've just got through showing you is pretty much how Windows 8 will act on your phone, tablet, or laptop. But on Windows Phone 8, you won't have a desktop tile. And on Windows 8 RT, which is the current tablet version that's on the market, you'll have a desktop tile, but you won't be able to run or install regular Windows programs. And then on Windows 8 and Windows 8 Pro, you'll have a desktop tile and you'll be able to run your regular Windows programs. It's confusing, I know, but the thing to remember is that if you want to run your current Windows XP or Windows 7 programs, do not get Windows 8 RT. Okay, back to the fun. After clicking on the desktop, you'll notice that it looks and functions exactly like a typical Windows desktop would, except for one gaping hole. There's no start menu. But if you swipe to the lower left hand corner of the screen, you'll see an icon pop up for the start screen. But clicking on this takes you back to your apps. So where's the old start menu? Well, if you long press on this icon, you'll bring up a basic start menu with some familiar settings. Other areas of the screen have different hidden functions as well. Like swiping from the upper left hand corner shows you which apps you have open and you can select and drag any of these apps to the center of the screen and it will switch to that app. And then long pressing on an app will close it. Another way to close an app is by swiping down from the top of the screen and dragging your application down to the bottom of the screen and letting go. Swiping from the upper or lower right hand corners of the screen will reveal the charms bar. The charms bar gives you search, share, and settings options for whatever program or app that you're in. The search option allows you to search through your app settings and files, or you can even search inside specific programs such as Google Chrome. The settings option brings up app specific settings as well as network and power options. Clicking on the power options allows you to shut down or restart the computer. Why would Microsoft put the shutdown option in such a hard to get place? 
Well, if you think about Windows 8 as a tablet or phone interface, how often do you actually shut down your tablet or phone? It makes a little bit more sense thinking about it in that light. If you click on more PC settings, you'll find what's comparable to the control panel. Here you can customize the look and feel of your lock screen and start screen, change user accounts, privacy settings, sync settings, network settings, and a lot more. So what do I think about Windows 8? Well, personally, I think Microsoft is headed in a good direction. I mean, even Apple and Ubuntu with its Unity interface are trying to make the mobile and PC experience more unified. Microsoft definitely hasn't perfected the experience, but at least as far as the general home user is concerned, they're going in the right direction. Have you gotten a chance to play with Windows 8 yet? If so, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Alright, for more tutorials, be sure to check out my website at Tinkernut.com or my YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash Gigafied. Alright, that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, hack some fun into your weekend.